Hi friends and new friends out there in Dash Nation. I'm Christopher Carruthers, also known as Tao Satoshi, and you're watching Cash Alternative TV. So I came to my attention today on the Dash Nation Discord, link below, that there is a new video out by Andreas Antonopoulos. Andreas is a noted blockchain scholar and well-known author, and the subject matter of his video today was what blockchain makes the best blockchain. Now as you know, I'm a big fan of Dash and I talk about it all the time, so I figured I would sit down and watch this video. Now it turns out in the video that there is no such thing as the best blockchain, because all kinds of blockchains do different things. I highly recommend watching this video, I'll leave the link in the description below as well. So because I like this video, I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to sit down and uh, dissect the video, take some comments that I agree with and I disagree with, and add my own thoughts for fun. Sounds good? Let's get started. Today, I want to talk to you about which blockchain is the best blockchain. Ooh, ooh, I know this one. So first of all, let's, let's ask the audience. So, all together, you shout out which you think is the best blockchain on three, one, two, three. A million times dash. Fantastic. Thanks. Purpose matters. The purpose you're going to use the tool for matters. And the purpose determines what is the best blockchain for your purpose. Yeah, it does make sense to narrow it down because a lot of blockchain projects are trying to do different things. Just a quick glance down coin market cap can tell you that. A lot of people will tell you a lot of things about their favorite project, but you should really ask what is the purpose? What are you trying to achieve? Well, Dash has a very simple purpose, and its purpose is to be a digital cash. And everything that Dash developers do, they do for that purpose. They want to have a fast payment system, they want to have a secure payment system, and I want optional privacy, because that's like what cash does when, you, when I hand you a $20 bill. Unless there's a surveillance camera around, nobody sees it. So the Dash developers know what our purpose is, and they strive hard every day to achieve it. Andreas notes that one of our biggest competitors, in fact, the biggest competitor, has gone astray since its launch. The designers of... Bitcoin and the developers of Bitcoin had some ideas about it being digital cash. And for some period of time, it plays digital cash. For some period of time, it plays speculative gambling casino money. And for some period of time, it plays store value, especially in countries where their currency is distressed. Yeah, and what that does is it shows the importance of sticking to the roadmap. Like at one point, Bitcoin didn't know whether it wanted to have large blocks or small blocks. So what did that do? Because they had no governance, it just split up the entire chain. They went Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin. So you really, you really can't win when it comes to that, because you have a whole percentage of the community that wants to do this, and you have a whole percentage of the community that wants to do another thing. And, and then you end up splitting, and you don't even know what you're striving to do anymore. Or you have two different projects with the half, half people pulling one way and half the people pulling in another way. But Dash knows what it wants to do, and we're sticking to the roadmap all the time. We want to be a digital, we want to be a digital currency for payments, and for payments only. We want to be digital cash. So I think that helps that we have our priorities straight, and we just have a straight-ahead vision. Andreas also has some thoughts on the market, which I share and I quite agree with. The market not only decides, but sometimes the market is stupid. It's crazy. It's irrational. It's driven by sentiment and emotion. Yeah, the market isn't really paying much attention to our successes because although Dash News does a good job, it's an internal news service, we pay them through the blockchain, not a lot of uh, regular mainstream, if you can call them mainstream, crypto media follows us and they don't cover us. So the market, even, even though they see all these, uh, the innovations that we're doing, they just sort of kind of go meh and move on and plow their money into the next uh, project like Tron or Bitcoin SV or something that doesn't even do anything, doesn't really bring anything to the ecosystem, but yet they're plowing their money in. So I do see what Andreas is talking about there. Andreas also believes that there has to be trade-offs in crypto. You can't simply be scalable and decentralized and secure and fast. You can't? You can't. 
Are you sure? Dash has many innovations that lead to the things that he just described. Dash is scalable because we have a robust system of full nodes and incentivized master nodes from the blockchain. So that, that means the hardware that these full nodes run on can be upgraded because they're being incentivized by the network. But just take a, a little percentage of the money that they're making from the blockchain just to make their services more powerful. And from time to time, the network mandates that these services become more powerful. And Dash is decentralized because we have a system of full nodes and a system of master nodes that are all centralized. There's no single point of failure. These are master nodes and full node owners from around the world. Similar to Bitcoin, the only difference is they're getting paid for it where the Bitcoin nodes don't. And you want to talk about secure, all Dash transactions are sent through a system called chain locks. Now what, cha what chain locks does, it sends your transaction through a quorum of master nodes which lock it and say that this transaction cannot be double spent, which means you can send it to another address for a higher fee and that one will be accepted before your first one. And then you have two people that want to accept the same transaction. This cannot happen in Dash because of chain locks. And it's fast. Chain locks locks your transaction in a second. So the minute you press send, well, the second you press send, the person on the other side knows that that money is going to be theirs right away. So I get the feeling that Andreas hasn't spent a lot of time studying Dash. We really have made a lot of progress in the regards of what he's talking about in this video. He coins a new term, trilemma, which means that no currency can have any more than two of the three main criteria of digital cash. In engineering terms, there are some fundamental trade-offs. We call these dilemmas or trilemmas sometimes. A classic trilemma is you can't design for security, decentralization, and scalability. So in a trilemma, you can only do two of the three things at the same time. If you make something that is scalable and secure, it's not decentralized, or it will be less decentralized. If you make something that's scalable and decentralized, it won't be as secure. If you make something that's decentralized and secure, it won't be as scalable. Well, if Andreas was in front of me today, I would invite him to take a really close look at Dash. With the technology that I told you we have before, we have chain locks, we have an incentivized masternode system, it's all decentralized, and it's fast. But if Andreas can come up with a reason why that, that this does not work in the Dash's, Dash's case, we'd be more than welcome to hear it. You know, if we're blowing our own horn and saying, oh, Dash is the best, Dash is decentralized, Dash is fast, Dash is secure. We're saying all this stuff because we believe it. So maybe if Andreas wants to come and check us out and say, okay, you guys really don't know what the heck you're talking about. This doesn't work. Well, we welcome that. So if Andreas, if you're watching this video, please, I welcome you to give to dive more deeper into Dash and see what the heck it is that we're, we're doing right or what we're doing wrong. And then, of course, there's the blockchain that will tell you, we do all three in the trilemma. What that means is they don't understand the trade-off. Or maybe, just maybe, you don't understand about Dash. I guess time will tell. Andreas finishes off the video with a piece of advice. So, next time someone asks you, what is the best blockchain? Instead of shouting out your favorite product or project, ask, for what? Well, for my purposes, it's a digital cache, and I'm still going to choose Dash. Well, that's it for me today. Don't forget to like this video, and subscribe and click the bell if you want to see more from me in Cache Alternative TV episodes. Until next time, remember, Dash is a digital alternative to cash, and is becoming more so every day. Bye for now.